Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Stella. I make lighthearted content all about my life with chronic illness and disability and whatever takes my fancy. I also share my lovely cat Luna, who's always right by me, aren't you, Bebs? <laughs> She's always here causing havoc, interrupting my videos. Right now she's hungry, so she's eating, so you might hear some cat crunchies. <laughs> but anyway, today is a really exciting video because I am doing a furniture flip. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm going to be flipping the TV unit. What is the word for it? Renovating, painting, changing up <laughs> the TV unit. This is kind of a test for me to see whether I can do this because some of you might know I have mast cell activation syndrome. Plus I have chemical sensitivity and my other chronic illnesses that affect my lungs. I have asthma. For the longest time, I've not been able to do any cleaning or anything like that because it sets off my asthma and my allergies. My parents came yesterday, which was Sunday, to help out because the TV unit we got was slightly damaged. So I liked one from Swoon, Swoon Editions, but it was almost £500, which was just way out of my budget. As somebody who's disabled, I do not have the money for that. And then my brother suggested I check eBay. I looked and I found the exact TV unit, but it wasn't black. It was like just wood. I want it to be black because then it will match my fireplace and my bookshelf, which I'm not sure if you can see. But the thing is it's wooden colored. Plus there was like a, there's like a big chip down the side. So <laughs> my dad came over and he did that. But the thing is I couldn't really film it because the dust was really bad. It was setting off my asthma. So myself and my mom, we had to go out and occupy ourselves for a few hours while my dad did that. Once he cleaned up and stuff, then we came back to the house. So that's kind of the system we have. If you want to check out more of that, I did a renovating my bedroom video not long ago. We had a similar system where I went to the hospital while they did it. So this is a good test for me to see whether I can paint on my own. Just to let you know, it has kind of already been painted and done. I just need to do a few touch-ups. And so for me, that'll be a good test whether I can do it. This is why I'm dressed like this. This is like old t-shirt and stuff. I'll show you what my current TV unit looks like. One of the reasons why I wanted to get rid of it is because my brother told me it's horrible. As I mentioned in my renovating video, when we moved in, we were also planning a wedding and then I got sick not long after and so money has been really tight and we just kind of got what we could, right? So then we decided to paint our coffee table which was white as well. So I'll add in a little clips here and there to show you. So right now I'm gonna stop talking <laughs> and get to doing Wish Me Luck. And on a side note, I just wanted to tell you about this really cool gadget my parents got me. They bought me this Vileda robot hoover from Lidl and I just wanted to tell you guys about it because I know for those of us with chronic illness and disability, hoovering and cleaning can be really difficult. And this was hundred pounds in Lidl, which hundred pounds is not cheap by any means, but for a robot hoover like this, they're normally about 250 to 500 pounds for a good one. It's pretty big and actually it's pretty quiet. All you do is you just turn the button on at the top and it just starts hoovering. <laughs> I'll add an insert in so that you can kind of see how it works. It's not fancy, like it doesn't have a remote control that you can do settings for and stuff like that. But it does run for about 80 minutes before it turns itself off. You can charge it. I'll let you know how I get on with it throughout this video too. So this is the TV unit. <laughs> I just put a pillow for myself and Luna decided to put herself there. But this is what my dad's done so far. You can see it's like done. We need to put handles on here because it's really hard to open this. And there you can see there's like holes in there. And there are also legs which we bought gold spray paint for because our fireplace has gold bits on it. Obviously this is our dining room but our fireplace in our living room has that as well so they're just little bits I need to touch up. 
like here and stuff that are not very noticeable, but I will notice. And over here is where my dad filled. He did such an incredible job. It literally looks like there was no chips or anything and it matches the other side perfectly. Unbelievable. When we moved in, I did a lot of painting of furniture because we had lots of secondhand stuff, but it's been a good, I don't know, seven, eight years since I've done any painting. My skills are not quite what they used to be. <laughs> and I used to go to art school, so if you don't know, I did textile design for fashion at London College of Fashion. And then I moved on to Chelsea College of Art and Design. I had to leave after the second year because of illness, not knowing kind of what was going on with me. And that's kind of when all my health stuff started happening. Then I got a job at the library and uh, that was kind of just like, uh, don't think so. That was kind of just like meant to be a temporary thing while I go on a gap year. And it didn't really end up working out that way because I got really ill and then I got fired from my job because of not being able to do the job properly. And that meant that obviously I couldn't study either. And then it was just like a long process of getting tests done seeing doctor after doctor, treatment after treatment, medication after medication, being told it's all in my head, that I'm too young to have problems and all these things. And then eventually I saw a doctor privately and I got a bunch of tests done and we found out I have Lyme disease and it was stage three, which meant that it was chronic. It had affected all my joints, my nervous system, my heart, my brain. I got Lyme carditis and Lyme encephalitis and encephalitis is really serious because it's inflammation of the brain and it is one of the reasons why I have seizures and epilepsy. My epilepsy is autoimmune which means it's not something I was born with, it's something that developed due to other health issues. And we reckon that I actually got lupus because of Lyme disease, because I was tested for lupus initially, but my test results came back negative because he did assume I could have lupus. They came back negative and therefore we weren't worried. My arthritis came back negative because that's another thing. They thought I could have seronegative or rheumatoid arthritis, but neither one of them was the case however he said that sometimes they can come back as a false negative put me on steroids for arthritis they actually made my symptoms worse later on to find out that if you take steroids whilst having Lyme disease it can actually enhance the Lyme bacteria which is already in your body I should really talk more about Lyme disease but I guess one of the reasons why I haven't is because I've been on Instagram for about five years and the first thing I found out that I had was Lyme disease and so I've done so much talking about it on Instagram and if you want to go and see what I've done and talked about on there you're more than welcome to and then another thing is is that it's caused me so much trauma and lots of doctors don't believe in Lyme disease. I think in Australia, they're trying to ban it as an illness altogether, which is just scary when global warming means that there's more ticks than ever. And there is this false thing out there that apparently you have to have had a bullseye rash in order to get diagnosed, which I never did. And only 30% of people with Lyme disease get the bullseye rash. So it's a whole thing and I've got books upon books about Lyme disease upstairs. I bought a book that was so helpful that I ended up contacting the author who is based in California. And I ended up getting on a Zoom call with him and he asked for like all my blood tests. He asked me for like medical history who I've seen, what I've been told, stuff like that. And he there and then diagnosed me with Lyme disease based on my blood results. Because 
Funny thing about Lyme disease is, is my blood results came back positive and they were a high positive at that. But the NHS decided that they weren't going to take it seriously and they said Lyme disease never happens in England, it's extremely rare. Unless I've been hiking in America, it's impossible. But the thing is, I'm Bulgarian, we have mountains. In fact, Lyme Borreliosis is <laughs> extremely common in Bulgaria. It's one of the highest figures or numbers of people in the world get Lyme disease in Bulgaria and because they know about it over there, most people get treated almost immediately and therefore they don't get left with the long-term symptoms because Lyme disease is one of those things where if you get it treated straight away with antibiotics, it just goes. But because I never got the treatment I needed, it spread and became chronic and now I'm left with long-term damage that has now led to me having lupus as well. And because I already have EDS, my body was naturally weaker and I was more susceptible to getting Lyme disease. A lot of people with EDS do develop Lyme disease because you can get Lyme disease from mosquitoes, from biting ants, from spiders and stuff like that. It's not just from ticks. And so if you get bitten and you have EDS and your immune system is naturally weaker, you're more than likely to get it. I'm sure Chris was bitten, but because his immune system is really strong, he never ended up actually getting Lyme disease. And then with things like COVID, I got it twice over the last couple of years and I suffered immensely the first time I had long COVID with severe breathing issues. Chronic illness is not an easy thing to go through. And once you have one condition, you're more than likely, whoops, sorry Luna, you're more than likely going to develop another one. The journey never ends, it's always continuing. One of the reasons why I wanted to start my page and do what I'm doing over here on YouTube is just to share my life and just show you that I've been through so much and it's still ongoing, but I have improved. I wanted to start a YouTube channel for like, years but because I was so ill I didn't feel capable of doing it and although I'm still ill I'm better at sort of knowing what my triggers are knowing how to manage what I'm going through and if I do have really really bad days I know I need to rest take it easy take a week off two weeks off whatever I need to do get some treatment get new medication speak to my doctors yada yada then things start to get better the good thing is is um, my seizures and my encephalitis autoimmune epilepsy and stuff like that is so much better than it used to be that is like the biggest improvement i've had the thing is i'm doing this now and i'm most probably going to have a migraine later but sometimes i just re ah! see Sometimes I just really like challenging myself. So that is kind of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm not saying you guys should do it. Me and my brother are like that. Like recently he slipped a disc in his back at the gym because he kind of overdid it at the gym. And so he couldn't come back and help to finish off the last part of our bedroom renovation. And my brother is like me in a sense that if he's going through something, he is just going to kind of try and do as much as he can until he can't anymore. And I don't even think that's a good thing, but that's my personality. If you know about the 16 personality types, Myers-Briggs personality types, I am a Myers-Briggs INFJ. And then in Enneagrams, I think I'm an eight, the challenger. I don't know as much about Enneagrams. I know that I'm one of the rarer types. I'll do anything for the people I love. I will go above and beyond when I'm really ill and do everything I can to do what I can for the people I love. But if you get on the wrong side of me or you get on the wrong side of my family, I will fight to the death. <laughs> and nobody likes getting into arguments with me. <laughs> I would love to know more about you. What's your personality type or Enneagram type? 
let me know a bit about how you got diagnosed if you're chronically ill thank you to everyone who's been supporting my channel who watches who comments and all that stuff I'm just touching up the coffee table so you can sort of see it now this is not the smartest decision of life because I haven't put anything down but the coffee table has had two coats on already I'm just doing like little touch-ups here and there and if I mess up I only have myself to blame <laughs> we're slowly trying to do each room I think it's about time out with the old in with the new as spring comes and I don't mean getting new stuff sometimes it's about new energy new feelings letting go of people who haven't been the best to you trying new things like for me painting on my own is a first since I've been chronically ill I am already starting to get a bit of a headache but today is a low pain day my pots isn't as bad today okay I think that looks good now oh let me show you my work. I think I did a pretty good job. Obviously it's still wet. If I show you around. That's how it looks at the moment and it matches the fireplace and my bookshelf here. I'm actually just so exhausted now that I'm gonna take a little rest. I'm covered in paint. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna clean myself up because I'm that tired. Luna's there. <sighs> so I'm just gonna take a little break and uh, come back and show you the Hoover. Two hours later. It's actually a couple of hours later. <laughs> and I ended up falling asleep. I've still got the marks on me. <laughs> This is what happens. I exert myself for like half an hour and I need to sleep. Chronic illness life. Later. Oh, you're getting to know it. That's Chris turning it on. <laughs> it's quite good though it even like comes up onto the rug it doesn't it doesn't see it moves itself it's quite strong it's doing underneath the sofas you scared the living lights out of her <laughs> Keeping a safe distance, but bye. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> I turned it off now because I don't want to get her too scared. She can get to know it while it's turned off, can't you, bye? Yeah, go go get to know it again. Tomorrow. Today is a gorgeous day. It is literally 13 degrees, but I think it's meant to feel like 15. It is warm, lovely, and it's the perfect day for spray painting. And Chris is here to help me today. So I've got my spray paint. Chris has kindly set up for me gloves at hand, and these are the legs I'm going to be spraying. It says on the canister that you just spray about 20 centimeters away, leave it for 15, 20 minutes, and then you can turn it over into the other side, leave it another 20 minutes, and then you can 
respray for a double coat and you can do as many coats as you desire i've never spray painted anything in my life <laughs> so fingers crossed this works out right i'm nervous can you shake this for me chris yeah. happy don't talk he shakes away Squeeze, squeeze it. I am, I've even got rubber, oh, here we go. I even had rubber gloves on to help me. Okay, I'm nervous. So how much is 20 centimeters, would you say, about here? Uh, a little bit closer. Here? About that, yeah. Ooh, that's quite fun. Oh shoot, I think I did it too close. Did I do it too close on that side? If you go round. What's up with it? Like, is it gonna drip? I don't know. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, I think I did it too close, but I'll do a second coat, won't I? Quite a nice finish. It looks like antique brassy. Let's do this one now. Yeah. This one I'll do better. It is fumy, that's why it's good we're outside. Yeah. That's it, I think. I won't do too much on that one. Yeah. And then wait for it to dry because I think I yeah. overdid it on that one. Turn it over. Yeah. Suppose. No, I can't yet. It's still wet. Yeah. Mm. Right. I'm gonna wait 15 to 20 minutes and then come back. <laughs> 20 minutes later. So it's been about 15, 20 minutes and this is fully dry. I realized that on this side I did it way too thick, but that was the first part I sprayed. I'm gonna try and do thinner sections. But it's all a learning curve, so I'm just going to turn it over. Because I think I need to see this side a bit better. Oops. Not this again. <laughs> I promise I'm not doing that on purpose. And yeah, keeping a distance is better from what I figured out. Oh, that hurts my hand. That looks good. I didn't do as thick that time. It's pretty good. It looks nice and antique -y. I like it. It's good. Mm -hmm. Happy DIY job. So Chris just made me a tea while I sit in between. My favourite mug. I know I look kind of crazy, but because of lupus, I'm trying to avoid sunstroke. And my eyes are sensitive because I have photophobia. So just trying to keep safe and these sunglasses are too big for my head. They keep falling down. So I'm going to take them off. But let's go for coat number two now. I'm getting the hang of this now. Look at that, I'm a pro. Banksy, the higher. <laughs> Banksy ain't got nothing on me, are you kidding me? I have to say though, pressing this is really hard. I don't know how people do this for a job or art, because I used to go to art school and a lot of people did spray paint in and I don't know how people can sit there and just spray. Let me get the sides. Oh, that looks amazing. It's coming along, huh? Mm. Okay. I'll stop there for another 20 minutes. Second coat on the other side now. Round two for this side. 
So I've come back in because these are fully dry now. I did a great job, if I do say so myself. Also, the handles came in. I ended up spray painting them so that they're the exact same gold because the gold was a little bit more brassy looking. And these handles we had to order because they're a special type of handle. Because if you have a look, oh, hi, Luna. <laughs> These are zigzag and the zigzags are different on both sides. And so if I put handles here, they'd be on different levels. So these handles, you physically attach them at the top here and then the screws are on the back and essentially they're just pull handles. So yeah, quite excited to put those in and put the legs on. So both the legs are on now. However, we're actually gonna to go to the shop and buy a varnish or like a top coat because it scratches really easily. So I'm gonna to touch this up and then we're gonna do a top coat of varnish to prevent this happening. And then we'll add the handles on once we've done that. I touched up all the bits that needed touching up. You can see that I'm a complete mess. <laughs> Got black all over me. And Chris went to get some varnish in the meantime. So I've got some clear matte varnish and once this dries in about an hour or two, I'll come back and varnish it. And thankfully this is quick dry. So we should be done today. 2,000 years later. So it's been two weeks since you last saw me. Basically, I completely messed up the coffee table there's lumps and bumps and marks and everything which i'll show you in a second and it was really late at night when i was doing it so i guess i couldn't see properly i actually got ill and i ended up getting an infection and i've just been getting over my infection today is the first day that i feel kind of all right and it's a lovely day and my parents are coming over to actually help me finish it and they can do it outside because it's warm today. I think it's 16 degrees. Before they come and uh, we get on with finishing it, let me just show you what it actually looks like because it's terrible. Here is all the messiness. Can you see it from there? You can see there's all like bubbles and stuff. So I wouldn't recommend this varnish at all. Luna, you've been so naughty. It dried up so quickly. It says one hour dry. I'd say it dries within like 10 minutes. And for someone who's not used to using varnish and for somebody who doesn't have a steady hand and who's never done it before, it was extremely difficult. That's what I have to say about that. I know I'm lucky that my dad does this for a living and he can help me. So I'm excited to have it all finished by the end of the day. Where are you dad? Oh, you're here, look, this is so bad. And this side as well, round here. Okay. I think the top is okay. How I did the top is okay, but yeah, it's not good at all. That's all right. So we'll, we'll stand a little bit down and. Uh, what do you think one, of my paint job? This one is good. This one. Is hey, good. at least I did a good paint job. No, this one is good. This is very good. This one is very good. Did I get my painting skills from you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just sanding all the bits I messed up. Go there and wait for it yeah. to come. Yeah. Careful, don't you do that. Whatever you think, that whatever is best. Um, I can do it the same as this one and it'll be the same. Okay, do it the same, and then once it's dry, you can put the handles on, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Everything will be done. Everything will be done. <laughs> Ha, I got you. <laughs> <Not true. laughs> I got you. <laughs> you always look good, Mum. You always Thank look you. good. Thank you. You look good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just had to sand these bits and we're going over it. This table dried really nicely. And everything's drying really fast because we're outside.
here is the finished product i'm super super happy with it if it's perfectly in the space matches our fireplace the tv looks super sleek with it you can see the zigzags the legs turned out beautifully the handles everything i am super happy what do you think And here is the coffee table. Looks really nice with the TV unit. It just looks like a really cohesive room now. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's good to know that I can do a little bit, but clearly I push myself too much. Ooh. <laughs> I tried to catch Luna, she ran away from me. It was a learning curve for me, and maybe it helped you in some way, but it's good to know I can somewhat do some painting, I can spray paint, but obviously I overdid it and made myself ill, so that wasn't good. But <laughs> with the next refurbishment or renovation, I will know better and I'll know more of what I can do so that I don't get an infection or get ill. Plus it's summertime, so hopefully my immune system is a little better. And just to let you know about the Hoover, I really like it. This is not sponsored by Lidl or by Lida. If you do want it, it's in Lidl currently for £100. It's not perfect, it can get stuck sometimes, especially if it goes over wires. But if you just make sure to move wires out of the way and stuff like that, it will run for about 80 minutes. These whiskers, is that what they're called? The whiskers, they get the corners really well. It gets hair really well. Um, you can lift up this part here and that's where the dirt catches. You can see it's done quite a bit of hoovering for us. So I highly recommend it. So that's my thoughts on the Hoover. I'll, put, I'll get Chris to put this back for me. The only thing is, is it can't do stairs. That's the only downside. Luna, you wanna help me say bye, baby? Let's say bye. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, subscribe for more Luna cuteness. <laughs> and we'll be back soon for another video Mwah. thanks for watching thanks for being here and i'll see you in the next one bye